What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Ryan here. Uh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> you guys are awesome. We're almost at 400 subscribers. I'm trying to get to 1,000, but you guys are awesome. We're almost at 400. Thank you guys so much for your comments, your uh, your good wishes, vice versa. I appreciate it. It goes a long way. Uh, it helps motivate me to continue to do what I do. Don't worry, I got other videos planned for today, but I want to give a quick shout out to all you new subs. Thank you again for uh, coming by. I uh, appreciate you again. Um, now, I got a lot. You clearly see by the taps. I got a lot of news to talk about. I got a lot of PlayStation news, and I got a lot of... Uh, I even got some Microsoft news for those who claim that I just... Uh, I don't really talk about Microsoft, and you want to hear my opinions on Microsoft in terms of news. I got some news from Microsoft. Um, I couldn't find that much in terms of like... I think I missed one article. It was one talking about their games. They have a games uh, sale going on, too, so... Keep that in mind. I just I had to throw that in here. I did not have I did not find that tab, but um, there you go. There's games. There's a game discount for you guys. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into this gaming news. Um, again, shout out to everybody. And uh, the podcast obviously is going to happen tonight. So if you guys are interested and you want to get in the podcast, uh, let me know. You can tell me your PSN ID, or you can message me uh, while we're live on the chat. And you know you want to get in, let me know. I'll just, uh, let you in there. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead. I know I'm rambling, but let's go ahead and get into this news. All right, so Mass Effect Future in Turmoil as uh, Andromeda DLC devs attack EA. Now, this is a rumor, and uh, here's this quote. Uh, this news saddens us, but it was made official after a meeting with this uh, meeting this week that uh, there will be no story DLC for Mass Effect Andromeda from us. Due to issues in initial production, staff allocation, heavy critique, significant delays in other projects, and reductions in Montreal, it was decided to shelve the franchise for the time being and all our resources and outsourcing are being focused to the 2018 release of Anthem. Uh, for the moment, the Mass Effect series will be on ice until Bioware can decide which direction the franchise will go. Now, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and say, they already talked about uh, Anthem. I'm saying right now, all their resources, excuse me, turn this down. All their resources right now, all their time is going into Anthem. I know you're wondering, well, that's kind of weird. Well, it, it's pretty obvious. You guys saw the gameplay that was leaked, uh, for, that was uh, on PlayStation Channel, and the gameplay that was on Microsoft's E3 show was the exact same thing, only different button presses. They're going for parody on this game, and they're, like, legit trying to do this. I'm sorry. I'm, you, you heard it here first. They're going for parody, you know? They're trying their hardest to get this game to look good on both, and uh, that's just how it is, <laughs> you know? Sure, I'm going to get some fanboy in the comment section that says otherwise, but really, <sighs> visuals don't lie, man. Visuals do not lie. That being said, let's go ahead and get into some gaming news. Shinmu 3 introduces new characters, promises, uh, a new new videos, and announcements at Gamescom. So, with that being said, could Sony be at Gamescom this year? If I'm not mistaken, Shinmu was exclusive to PlayStation. If I'm not mistaken. If not, it was, uh... Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's exclusive to PlayStation. So they might be at... Uh, P uh, PlayStation might be at Gamescom this year. Because Shinmu is for the PS4 and PC. Okay. So, it's not really exclusive, exclusive but, you know... Console-wise, it's PS4. All right, so um, there you go. Um, a lot of people are speculating that they wouldn't show up at Gamescom. I knew I was for uh, for one. I didn't think they would show up for Gamescom. I'm thinking more of a TGS, which is Tokyo Game Show, or a PSX, which is PlayStation Experience. Um, that's what I was thinking, but if that happens, it happens. So that's cool. That's really cool. Uh, okay, this game right here was showing at Sony's E3 this year. It's called Everybody's Golf. It was shown in the pre-show. I could have sworn this was a PS4 game, but it looks like it might be a mobile game. It's called Everybody's Golf. Uh, and it it uh, surpasses 400,000 pre-registrations, so that's pretty cool. And uh, to celebrate that, they're giving away 30,000 coins in in-game currency and two Avatar prize tickets and a limited edition outfit. So there you go. If you guys are interested in Everybody's Golf, you heard it here. There you go. That's what you're getting. So there you go. All right, Falcon President wants to release uh, Missing the Legend of Heroes games in the West. Now, Falcon President uh, Tashihiro uh, uh, Kondo comments on localizing the Legend of Heroes. Uh, what was that? Legend of Heroes uh, 7, uh, 0, no uh, 
Kaiseki. Nah, I don't want to pronounce these names. It's too many. But uh, it's a PlayStation. It's coming to PlayStation. It was, I think it's exclusive to PlayStation. It was announced for PlayStation 4. Uh, the series has been a success in the West, for example. Even though the final entry, uh, Trails in the Sky, the third was originally released in 2007 in Japan. It held a top spot on the Steam charts upon its Western release in May 2017. Now, that being said... If it does happen, that'll be cool. You know what I'm saying? That's great. You know, that's another cool game that's coming to the West. So that's awesome. Uh, haven't really heard much about this, but hey, we'll see. We shall see if it does happen. But, uh, you know, you heard it here. And don't worry, all links are in the description below. If I'm not reading as much as you want me to, I'm sorry. All right. So the new Star Citizen videos uh, were sh uh, shown today, and they were showing off, like, the visuals. They were showing off these uh, Nox bikes or space bikes, which is this right here. Looks really cool. That's what they are. That's pretty cool. And what's crazy about this, the crowdfunding has went over $153 million. That's a lot of dough. It's a lot of dough for this game. A lot of dough. And that's, uh, it's currently sitting at $153,216,155 from 1,833,643 backers. That is pretty damn impressive indeed. Wow. It passed $151 million only in a month. Oh, sorry. Okay. It, it passed $151 million, but only has a month left to go. Or only a month ago. I'm sorry. I'm reading that wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like an idiot. But uh, it passed $151 million only a month ago. So there you go. That's crazy. That, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. Wow. Um, wow, <laughs> I'm shocked by that. I'm legit shocked by that. I'm legit shocked by that. That's pretty cool. All right, so uh, this right here is from Naughty Dog. Uh, uh, let's see, okay. Naughty Dog games ranked for PlayStation. These are all ranked, so coming in at number 14 is the original Crash, which I'm playing right now, rematched on Crash, uh, the uh, Crash Insane Trilogy, which I highly recommend. It is one of the better uh, remakes we've gotten this gen, aside from Ratchet and Clank. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, what's it, um, L.A. Noir is, is happening, because that's going to be another good one, but we're going to see. But number 13, we got Jack X Combat Racing. We got number 12 for Jack uh, 3. Uh, for 11, we got Crash Bandicoot Ward, which I think should be a little higher down the list, but okay. I think it should be at least number nine, but whatever. Jack 10, or I'm sorry, uh, Jack 2 ranks at number 10. Uh, we have uh, Crash Bandicoot 2, uh, Cortex Strikes Back, coming in at number nine. We have Crash Team Racing. Now, what's funny about this, I did a, I did a video on this on PlayStation News where I talked about um, the possibility of them bringing this back, and it was hinted by Act Activision that we might get another, uh, either a new Crash game or we're going to get another remaster. With the success of Crash Bandicoot, yes, this thing sold out yesterday like crazy. Um, with the success of this uh, game alone on PS4 by itself, and it's rumored to go to play, uh, Xbox, but with the success of this by itself on PlayStation, I can already see them announcing Crash Team Racing remaster for PlayStation 4 and possibly Xbox One users if the uh, you know the game you know if the Insane Trilogy goes to P uh, Xbox. But again, if this does happen, expect to see this happen. Ex expect to see this. So that ranks it at number eight. Uh, Uncharted, uh, Drake's Fortune, which has one of the better stories in the series, ranks in number seven. So that's pretty good. Uh, Jack and Dexter, the Precursor's Legacy, ranks in number six. We got The Last of Us Left Behind DLC as number five. That was actually really good. I, the only problem with this is that I wanted it longer, but um, obviously it wasn't longer. But it was, it was good. It's a good DLC. Uh, Uncharted 4 ranks in number four. That's kind of cliche, but okay. Uh, definitely won the, uh, it was definitely a good game this gen. Um, obviously it ended Nate's story, you know, Nate's story, but, um, at the same time it does kind of set up, I, I guess in a way it sets up future ones if you guys want to look at it in a broader scope, because, you know, there was a lot of questions not answered, and, uh, I guess we're going to get even more questions either answered or questions not answered, and, um, Uncharted Lost Legacy DLC, which comes out in August this year. So keep that in mind. Uncharted 3 ranks in number 3. So that's pretty fun. Like, again, I said, this is ironic. 4, 4, 3, 3. And up, there you go. Uncharted 2 ranks in number 2. 
Uh, again, this is one of my favorite ones in terms of story. Out of all the ones I would have to rank, I would have to say Uncharted 2 had the better story out of all of them. But um, this one was good too. But uh, that's how I look at it. And uh, obviously number one is Naughty Dog's quote-unquote masterpiece, ranked by everybody. It's their masterpiece, The Last of Us. Uh, you know, Ellie obviously is a big focus on the other on part two. We can play as her and all that jazz. So that's going to be a good thing to see. Cannot wait to see that. And it's going to be great. And uh, I know a lot of you are ready for it. It's the most anticipated game of this generation. So keep that in mind. Who is calling me? Hold on. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. But there you go. All right. Now, this right here, I wanted to talk on this. Now, we talked about uh, Microsoft's... Uh, Deals. They got some deals going on in their store. But this right here is regarding the Xbox One X from Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer talks about the Xbox One X release in Japan. I will never give up on Japan. Well, I hate to break it to you, Phil. You, you might want to give up on Japan. Last month, they sold only 600 units in Japan versus the Wii, or I'm sorry, not the Wii, but the Nintendo Switch and the uh, the PS4. The PS4 sold 28,000, if I'm not mistaken, or 27,000 in Japan alone last uh, month. Where the uh, Wii, or I keep saying the Wii, the Nintendo Switch sold like 14,000 or 20 something thousand. I, I forgot. But it was something like that. You know what I'm saying? In Japan. Now, if I look at this week's, or this uh, month's uh, MPD, changed. They sold 101 units. That's Xbox One. 101 units in Japan. As you clearly see, they discontinued selling uh, Xboxes uh, in Japan in general. So, there's no more Xbox in Japan, but in Xbox One, they sold 101 versus the, Xbox, or versus the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch came in at number one with 26,734 uh, units sold in Japan, and the PS4 sold 17,073 units in Japan. Now, globally, Sony came in at number one, and Nintendo came in at number two, and Microsoft came in uh, dead last number three. Now... If I look at the uh, North America sales, uh, Sony sold 67,519 versus the Nintendo Switch, which had 52,718, uh, yeah, and uh, the Xbox One, which had 36,790. Then I go to Europe, 138,289 PS4s were sold versus the uh, Switch, which had, which had 43,764 units sold, and then uh, Xbox One with 27,280. Overall, we uh, ranked these together because I already talked about their Japan sales. We ranked those all together. PS4 came in with uh, 286,433 consoles sold globally with the Nintendo Switch right behind the PS4 with 148,840 um, globally and the Xbox One with 75,251 globally so with that being with that being said i'm telling you right now a lot of you were saying like a lot of people are damage controlling xbox fans or, or fanboys are damage controlling saying well um <coughs> excuse me well uh it's pretty obvious uh they're they're holding out their money so that uh because the the beast is coming and all this retarded stuff let me tell you something your beast is 500 dollars Okay, it's getting exposed, it's being called by Digital Foundry of PS4 Pro, it's being exposed left and right, I'm telling you right now, you'd be lucky to sell crazy in Japan, you'd be lucky to even hit 600 in Japan, okay, so that's me being real with you, if it does sell well in Japan, I mean, I'll be a first, but if it does, hey, okay, but uh, I'm just being real with you, I'm hitting you with logic there, don't worry, again, all links are in the description below, and let's go right here, now this is my last little bit of news here, now, this right here I thought was going to be a little different because I know you guys seen a lot of this on YouTube where they're like having these code generators. It's like, oh yeah, this generates PSN codes where you can get $50, $100, PSN, or PlayStation Plus, $20, vice versa. You know what I'm saying? These generate. I thought what this, this whole situation was was people using the generators and like getting their cards and then lying and saying, oh yeah, by the way, uh, my PlayStation didn't register my card and I would like to have a refund or something like that from Sony. And then Sony was looking at that and like, okay, that's fake. And then like banned them, but it's not actually the case. So let's go ahead and read this update. Okay, yeah, let's see, hold on. Thousands of PSN accounts uh, affected by error that plunges users into debt and bans accounts. 
update number two going on from the case of the customer who phoned paypal regarding the issue his payment uh, that was returned was a sat or was uh, was sat and pending until today he has since confirmed that the funds were released by his uh, bank to paypal this could uh, back up the idea that the error is sony's Update number one, a customer's phone call to pay, uh, PayPal suggests the blame lies with Sony. The call, call, uh, the call stated this error is on Sony's end and is to do with them closing or somehow limited uh, their GDP account, meaning that the funds didn't credit the accounts. Another customer is con uh, contact with Sony says uh, the company finds PayPal to be at fault. A mass chargeback on PSN transactions by payment company PayPal has seen thousands of PSN accounts get banned as they are plunged into debt. In the report by Kotaku's Rich Staten, uh, it is stated that PayPal's actions will cause PSN accounts to effectively go into debt, resulting in temporary accounts bans until the, imb and the imbalance is uh, corrected as yet only UK accounts are affected if you try logging into PSN today and you're on uh, and you found your account suddenly suspended this is likely this is the likely reason Sony and PayPal are working together to solve the issue so Sony should at least understand the circumstances if you are affected uh, to see if you're among those affected without switching on your PS4 check your emails if you find an email from PayPal about a refund from transactions relating to PlayStation, then you've likely been hit. And we'll update you, uh, the story as it develops. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I never use PayPal on PSN. I don't think anybody should use PayPal on PSN. Now, I, I understand now that's going to sound a little hypocritical. That's going to be like, well, Ryan, they're, I mean, it's your network, your credit card. What I do is, after I use like my credit card to buy whatever it is I want to buy on PSN store, whether it be a game uh, DLC, keys for Rocket League, you name it. I immediately delete my credit card stuff off my account. I immediately delete it. I don't keep it on my account. I delete it. Okay? It doesn't stay on my account. It's deleted. It's gone. Okay? Some of you uh, tend to keep your stuff on the account. That's bad. You don't want to do that. You want to delete it and be done. Okay? So, keep that in mind. Another thing that I don't do with PayPal, I, I don't use PayPal for a lot of things. Like I, most of my stuff, like most of my online stuff I do is either PlayStation, like PSN, or like I go through Amazon. You know what I'm saying? I, I do that. Now I do use PayPal for sites that I really don't trust. Let's say I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of Scuff, even though my Scuff controller works really good to this day. You know, I got a good one from them, so thank God they didn't skiff me, that they didn't scuff me on the controller. But um, I use it for I use it for like scuffs. I bought those uh, fame triggers and I bought a scuff controller from them, and uh, yeah, it was a long time ago. And then after that, I legit stopped using PayPal. But I know a lot of people like PayPal because they like they they like they like to feel safe. At the same time, PayPal does come with issues at times because let's say if you bought something from PayPal by like using PayPal on Amazon, notice how it takes you a little bit longer to get your money back. It might take you a few hours to get your money back into your account. Let's say you saw this TV. You're like, you know what? I don't feel like putting my info on uh, Amazon. I want to buy this TV. I kid you not. You could wait up to like a day, maybe close to two, to get your money back in. So keep that in mind. With that being said, though, that's all the news I got for you guys. Again, appreciate everybody's support on the channel. Uh, yes, I'll be uploading some Crash Bandicoot gameplay on the channel as well. I'm pretty far in my uh, game right now. I'm at, uh, what's his name, Ripperoo? That's where I'm at right now. But, uh... <laughs> I mean, I'll see you guys later, but I appreciate everybody's kind words again. Appreciate everybody's support. Again, I'm sorry for this video going up a little late. I had a lot of news to cover at the same time. I was having fun. So I hope you guys are having fun too. If you bought Crash, I hope you guys are having a good day. Expect more videos on later on today as well. And uh, for all the new subscribers, thank you again. Welcome. If you're new here and you're watching the video and you like the video so far, make sure you thumbs it up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you know as soon as my news comes available. I will see you guys later. You guys be good. All right, later.